to string or restring? That is the question we're going to answer today. We're going to talk about restringing a French horn rotary valve. Now, I get often I get inquiries about this, and there seems to be a lot of confusion about rotary valves in general. But let's talk a little bit first before we get into the actual stringing of of the rotary valve. Okay, so we have. Uh, a rotary valve um, in the, the case of a French horn or in a tuba and sometimes you'll run across this in rotary valve trumpets <clears throat> although I see those a lot less. Let's talk about some of the terminology. We have the rotor casing. The rotor itself fits inside there. We have a rotor cap and then we have what's called the back bearing right here or the back bearing plate and that's press fit into the rotor housing so that's something we're typically you're not going to be messing with that you want to leave uh, to a professional to deal with uh, these tolerances inside the rotor and casing are, are very small and the risk of damaging it is is pretty high so just probably leave that alone with the exception of oiling it here and there okay so then we go back to this side. We have the rotor stop plate, or sometimes referred to just as the stop plate. It's a plate, and it's got um, a place for a bumper or a rotor stop bumper right there and there. So that's the stop plate. These are the stop plate screws. On some brands, they use the same screw for everything, and other brands, like on Holton, they have three different screws for the different functions okay rotor stop plate rotor stop screws or stop plate screws this is the rotor stop arm this little uh, nickel plated job here that's the rotor stop arm the rotor sometimes this is just referred to as the rotor screw or the stop arm screw this other screw in the stop arm is the stop arm string screw this is really important distinction. A lot of times I get a call for an order. Yeah, I need a French horn screw. For what? Uh, for a string. Okay. The string on the lever or the string on the stop arm? I don't know. It's a small one. Um, okay. Small one. So, yeah, you know, the one that goes right down the middle. Oh, you mean the rotor screw? No, no, no. It's, it's the small one. Okay. So, you know what, you know what I'm saying. So, we got the rotor screw. The rotor stop arm string screw because the string goes around it. We have the lever and we have the lever string screw. All right. Lots of screws on this. So let's do this. In this case, this is a Yamaha student line French horn. I've got some of their real high quality uh, string screw or string screw. I've got a lot of their high quality um, string. Uh, that Yamaha uses and it works really well on their instruments as well as many many brands this will work just fine um, if you can you can you can use um, fishing line this is uh, a um, a braided fishing line so it's it's not your uh, monofilament this is a little bit thin for most applications. Only occasionally do I even have to use this. And if you can get 50 pound, this is only, um, I think 20, yeah, 20 pound test. So this is pretty small, pretty fine. Um, but it's, uh, it's good quality, but it just, only on the strangest of French horns is this even really needed. Okay, you want a good razor blade, a sharp razor blade very nice clean cuts we want to make so what we want to do is we want to have an angle we want to cut this string at an angle so we do that this will make threading it through the um, the lever much more easy and so I take a piece I've got a an area marked on my bench well let's just say that it's about a seven inch piece of string Go ahead and cut that. Now the way I do this, I take and I make a loop. It's just really simple. Just one single knot. That's all it is. Very simple. 
straightforward. On really thin string, you're going to have to make a couple loops before you put the string through there and create your knot. All right, let's get down to this. We're going to make a figure eight. If you can think figure eight when dealing with rotors, I think that'll help. You first of all go through the lever. There's a little hole there. We go through the lever toward the stop arm. Okay, through the lever toward the stop arm. We're going to make a figure eight now. This is where it's, it's, it's real easy, but it seems confusing. And it's not. And you're going to have to control this with your finger. So you go around the stop arm this way. And then we go around the string screw. So now we're coming back around. It's, there's our figure eight right there. That's all it is, is a figure eight. Okay, so we come through our lever toward the stop arm. Around the string screw. And we're going clockwise around that. And then around our stop arm again. Keep your finger on that. Now let's go back through the lever the other way. Now here's, here's the important thing. I like to make a loop like this. so that when you tighten the screw, you're tightening clockwise, so you're actually tightening the, the string and not unthreading it. So then I just keep that taut. I'm not putting any tension on this screw yet. I'm putting this lever string screw, and I will go ahead and tighten that down. Now we'll flip the horn over, and we will see immediately that the alignment is completely off. And that's totally okay because all we have to do now is hold that stop arm in place because we didn't tighten the string on it or didn't tighten the screw on that and then we just push up on that to get the alignment correct and then we'll automatically move and then I just like to keep things in place and then go ahead and tighten that screw down and that's all there is to it now every once in a while you'll have a situation where the string gets just a little bit too tight and it'll bind. You can just take this screw here and just take a little tension off. Just let it relax a touch and then tighten it. Retighten it. And then it should move freely. And let's check our alignment on here. It's a little bit off, okay? So that's not a problem. Some people bend these levers. It's really not necessary or advisable. Sometimes you have to because of the geometry of the lever, but that's a, that's a story for a technician. For your average person just doing their strings, go ahead, I'm loosening the screw, okay? Just loosening that a touch. I'm leaving my screwdriver right on it, and I'm just go ahead, and I'm just pushing up on that lever a little bit while I kind of twist this back and forth just a little bit and then go ahead and re-snug that and there that alignment is right on right on the money okay so that is all there is to doing a string uh, a restring on a French horn the, the other three valves are exactly the same way but just to eliminate any confusion let's do this these other two that are threaded exactly the opposite way. I'm going to just take this, this old string off and discard it. Okay, and the way I do that is I've got a little needle and I just dig that out of there, pull that loose, take that off, and throw it away. Let's get a new string. New string. There's my razor blade and my string. Okay. Again, I'm gonna. So this is uh, this end has got a nice clean sharp cut at a diagonal. I'll go ahead and do another one, right there. There's your string. It's about it's about six or seven inches long. It's not. You want to have enough that you can work with it. You can always trim it if it's too long. After you install it, okay. Just make that loop. Snug it down. Tighten the knot. All right, here we go. We're going through the string, or through the lever with the string. OK. 
okay? And we're going toward the stop arm. Doesn't matter which side your lever is on. You're always going toward the stop arm. And then we go around the stop arm, around the screw, creating a figure eight. There's your figure eight. Come back around this way. Keep everything in place with this finger. And then back through the lever. Create a little loop in the lever, or in the screw. <laughs> Excuse me, create a little loop in the string to go around the screw that's in the lever. Pull that taut, somewhat, not super tight. And then just, I turn it counterclockwise to, to take any tension out that might be in the string. And then I go ahead and snug it down. Snug that down, tighten it like that, okay? This is not tightened yet. That will use will be used for our adjustment. Let's look at the oh look at that lever. It's way low. Okay, no problem. Let's push up on it. It should move freely. There's the alignment. Let's go ahead and tighten the string. Uh, a screw on the stop arm. And if it moves, here, I like to push it down now and then tighten it. And if it's if it's off, we'll go ahead and readjust that. It looks pretty good, but it's a little high, so I'll push it down and just take out some of that tension on this, on this screw here, and then tighten it back. And that's dead on the money. So, you know, when you've been doing this for 33 years or whatever, you get, <laughs> your fingers get really quick and used to this. But most of you folks, you know, you do this once every five years, and, and it, it seems a mystery but really quite simple. You go through the lever, around the stop arm, around the screw, creating that figure eight, back through the lever, create a loop, and then bring it around the, the, the securing screw, and you should be fine. The string screw on the lever, I should say. Keep the nomenclature the same, right? That's all there is to it. It's a very simple procedure. Um, so if you like this, please pass it on and just give me a comment saying cool or love it or something like that. That actually helps to boost this in the viewings a little bit. And more than that, just pass this along to students, band directors, colleagues, friends, um, parents. It takes a little doing, and if you've never done it, it's probably worth paying, you know, somebody a minimum shop charge to change your strings and, and do it the right way and make sure everything's in alignment. Now, you can talk about rotor uh, um, lever height, and that can be adjusted for the individual player, but that's really uh, for the professional to do. Um, that can be done by simply loosening these strings, but then sometimes you create uh, lever throw issues, and then we have to adjust the levers so that the geometry is correct. So that's a little bit different animal altogether. Okay, well, thanks for checking this video out. I hope this has helped somebody get their French horn valves restrung without too much headache. Okay, thanks a lot.